Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fine. I'm the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today. And we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you. And I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the word today. You are in a natural body. That's a fact. But here's another fact. You are a spirit being that will live forever. That's living inside that body. And your citizenship is in heaven, not just earth. Wow. So that means there's going to be this fight because our bodies operate based on sense knowledge. So this body operates, and it's made to do this. And if you're going to cross the street sometime, you need to use what God gave you, your natural senses and the brain he put in your, in your head to cross the street. What do I mean? If you come to a, a road, I teach my children this, you look both ways. Now, what if, what if somebody had some well-meaning soul that said, oh, just let your kids have fun. Don't teach them the do's or don'ts of crossing the street. Well, I love my children. So therefore, I teach them the do's and don'ts. The do's and don'ts in this body are you look both ways. If there's a pickup coming, if there's a car coming, if there's a semi coming, stay there. And what are they basing this on? What they see. It didn't take any spiritual eyes to see that. It was a natural thing, driving down, stop. God gave you those natural senses for a reason. They're not evil. But I want you to think about this. If your citizenship is in heaven, and you're supposed to be thinking from an eternal point of view, this is where there's going to be a fight. Because all you see is what you see in the natural, and unless God opens your eyes, you don't see into the Spirit. Understand where I'm coming from tonight. Many times, sense-based knowledge and circumstances that we face, go, uh, we go through them, and they test us. I want to say this again. You've got to catch this. Many times, sense-based knowledge and circumstances that we go through test us. You say, well, if God didn't want me to go through it, then he wouldn't have me go through it. Well, now that's a little bit bogus. You live in a natural life, and sometimes things happen in the natural, but all these things happen, and these circumstances and these feelings will test. See, some of you are being tested right now. You know, I don't really feel this. I could be home Feet kicked up, drinking hot chocolate, just relaxing. Yeah, but you wouldn't get any spiritual meat. Just chilling, you know what I mean? Somebody said, well, the people streaming are doing that. They, they really did good. They didn't have to get out in this rain. Well, I'm thanking God for the rain. I kind of enjoy getting out in the rain. It's good to see some rain in West Texas. Amen. The devil wants you to approach life from a natural, humanistic point of view. And all of his demonic forces are actually fueled by a humanistic mindset. So when you come to church, that ends up getting confronted by the Word of God. Now see, I'm going to tell you again, our citizenship is in heaven. That statement alone goes contrary to a humanistic mindset where they think it's all about man and us. But my citizenship is in heaven, then I better learn some rules about heaven. I better learn some laws from heaven. I better learn how does heaven operate? Is there a king or is there a president? Are you listening to me? If my citizenship is there, I better figure out exactly how the setup is there in heaven so that I know how to operate. Are you following this? So the enemy wants you to approach everything from a natural humanistic point of view, but our citizenship is in heaven. So many people don't think of this. And coincidentally or not, they live an aimless, pointless seemingly life. They've lost sight of this truth. The sad thing is this. If you ever lose sight of this truth that your citizenship is in heaven, you will live aimlessly. You're not going to make it count. But we're talking about making this life count. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You hungry for the word tonight? 
<laughs> Are you hungry? Yeah. Second Corinthians 5, verse 8. Have you laughed today? Good. All right. It works. Already hearing testimonies of it working. It works. I got so tickled. We had a lifelong Baptist with this Sunday that led all of you out loud with laughter when I said, let's laugh for a minute. And I told him after church, I just happened to catch his eye. And he was all, ha, 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 ha. I was like, look at that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He also got baptized in the Holy Spirit at LifeLinks the other night. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Hey, it's a dangerous thing to get plugged in. Why is it dangerous? Makes you a danger to the devil. You really want to make this life count? Get plugged in with all your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit, and to a local church where he's called you to be. you got to find out where is that. If it's not here, that's okay. We'll bless you to find where it is. But you're going to have to be plugged in. There's some laws of the, of the kingdom of heaven that just they don't change. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8. We're confident. Yes, well pleased, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Never forget that. If someone is a citizen of heaven, if they're born again and they're following the Lord Jesus, they're out of rebellion and they're following God, they have repented, then guess what? You can be confident that if they lay this body down, you don't have to go around mourning. It, it will hurt a little bit, but you don't go around like you're never going to see them again because they're with the Lord. Blessed. They're blessed. Yeah. Don't sit here and feel sorry for them. Don't do that. Praise the Lord. I, I, I just, I get encouraged at Miss Dana, who recently we know lost David, her husband. She said she was talking to somebody, and they were acting sad. She said, well, wait, 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 wait. Are you trying to take him out of heaven? And she was smiling. She's like, he's in heaven. I said, wow, what strength that is. Glory. That everyone would live that way. Wow. Boy, I tell you what, I was glad it wasn't me she was talking to. I have shed a few tears. I miss him. We miss people on this side of heaven. That's part of it. But this is not the end. Not when you serve the Lord because you lay the body down and you're absent from it. You're present with the Lord. Therefore, verse 9, we make it our aim. Did you catch that? We make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him, the Lord. Do you want to make your life count for something? If you do, just wave at me one time tonight. Just wait. Okay, if you do, this verse right here is one you cannot forget. Make it your aim to please the Lord. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. Life can be summed up in one word, stewardship. And I'm talking to you about make it count. You're going to have to approach this life from this point of view. I'm a steward of this, and what I do with what God gave me, which is this body that he gave me, I'm going to have to give an account for this, whether good or bad. I'll just tell you, knowing that in eternity we're going to be judged, and that judgment is eternal, and it comes straight from the king of kings, and you know that you're going to receive according to what you've done in your body, this will help you make it count. What do you think? With this in mind. The next verse is one most Christians don't know exists in their Bible. It says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. The, the what? The t terror of the Lord? Let me ask you something. Do you know anything about the terror of the Lord? A lot of Christians don't. I can tell by their lifestyle. I can tell by how they post and how they lie. They don't know anything about the terror of the Lord. But I can tell you right now, when I was a fake Christian, I was too scared to step out into what God called me to do. 
But whenever I said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to give you everything that I have, all my heart, I surrender to you 100%. I give up doing things my way. I'm going to follow you. One thing I had in mind is the terror of the Lord. Because I wouldn't dare pose as a pastor without thinking every time. It's a terrible, terrible thing to be a faker. I'm going to be real. I'm going to follow God with all my heart, with all my soul, with everything I am. Praise the name of Jesus. People say, well, everyone falls short on this side of heaven. And there's true, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But you know what? we got to make it our aim to please the Lord. And that's the people I surround myself with, people that are making it their aim to please the Lord. Why? i got to know something, the terror of the Lord. Now, if I know that, look what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. We persuade men. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are well known to God, and I also trust we're well known in your consciences. Wow, what a word. Now, I want to give this to you tonight because you need to be thinking about these kind of verses in your life. This will help you stop acting a fool if you've been acting a fool. But I'll tell you this, people block this scripture out of their own conscience to enable them to tell someone off and to just say, I'm just going to tell it how it is. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to set them straight. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What about your conscience? Now see, this verse to me goes pretty deep. Is this talks about the construction of our consciences, actually. What am I saying? You've got to build and construct your conscience by the Word of God, by the viewpoint of eternity, if you want to make it count. If you don't construct your conscience based on the Word of God, then you're left to the culture. Then you're left to TikTok. Then you're left to some social media post. But see... You're left to some television show, some video that you're going to watch on your device, right? Some short you're going to watch. Pretty soon, if you're not careful, the thing that your conscience, your best friend is made to do, which is to convict you and say, no, don't, don't look at that. Turn away, get away from that. If you yield long enough to the wrong thing, you start building a conscience where you say, well, I've heard enough of the truth about the grace of God to say that God is good enough and he's so gracious and so loving and you ignore what the Bible actually says. That you're going to give an account according to what you've done and you got to know the terror of the Lord and this becomes something foreign to you. Whereas your conscience is supposed to be built on this. So there's some things you won't do whether anyone sees it or not because of the terror of the Lord, and you've got your conscience constructed on the Word. Now, when you do this, this is getting kind of deep for most people. When you do this, some are going to think you're crazy. And so you're going to have to make up your mind ahead of time. Either my conscience is going to be built on feelings, on popular opinion, on what? Uh, People shared a million times or on the Word of God. It's got to be on something. But see, you can construct it on whatever you want, but you're going to give an account for it. What does this mean? Translation. Just because you think something is okay doesn't mean it's okay. Have you ever seen the Scripture in the Bible, because it repeats something along these lines two to three times, every man does what's right in their own eyes, but the end is destruction. You don't want destruction. That verse has kept me up at night weeping for people for this reason. This tells me people are doing what they think is right, but it ends in destruction. Folks, that's hell. Destruction is hell. The ultimate destruction is hell. There's a man I watched just this week. He went to hell. He died. He drank whiskey with Some drugs he was taking, and it killed him. And he was going down to hell. And as he was going down to hell, he saw flying at the speed of light. He said he just knew in the spirit realm he was flying at the speed of light. Super fast. We're talking, what, did you say 186,000 miles an hour or something like that? 186,000 miles per second. 
That's pretty quick. Right? That's real quick. How many have ever driven that fast? <laughs> Nobody. They don't make a car to go that fast, do they? Thank God you die, but he was dead. And he passed by all of these people that said they were Christians. They were saying, help me. Well, I mean, that's, that, that kind of keeps me up. Because, you know, the only reason those people would be in hell is because they constructed their conscience not based on the Word but on something else. They did what was right in their own eyes. Now, listen to me. There's a lot of people doing this because that same man said he, for some reason, knew he was in hell for four days. And he said there kept being these earthquakes every few minutes. Was, the whole thing would shake. And when he would have a question... He said, the way you are in your spirit without being in this body, you just came to know things. You just knew things. And so when the question popped into his head, what is that? That shaking, that earthquake. He came to know this. Hell is expanding itself because so many people are going there. Man. So many humans are going there. Folks, we better take heed to these kind of things. No, you don't have to be scared. Just make sure you're building your conscience on the Word of God. Your conscience is made to be the inner voice on the inside of you telling you, no, don't do that. Stop. Control yourself. Stop acting out of control. Get, get that under control. Get that under control. See, you should have such self-control that the, you don't really have to have anything outwardly to stay stop because you have an inward stop. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have LifeLinks. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for LifeLinks. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. See, the enemy is the one that's going to try to make you think you're crazy to live with eternity in view. But I'm talking to you about how you make it count. You live with this eternity. I'm telling you, it's one heartbeat away. See, this is where you get to the point where you don't fear man. What can they do? Take your body? You fear the one who has the ability to cast you into hell. Jesus said, yeah, that's the one that you fear. The point is, it's not about what people think. It's not about what the devil thinks. But the point is, can people be persuaded to turn to God? Depends how much power the enemy has on their mind. Now, once someone turns to the Lord, verse 17, a famous verse, same chapter. We're kind of spending some time in 2 Corinthians 5 tonight. Look at this. It says, if anyone's in Christ, how many have heard this one before? You need to hear it again. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. So what happens? Now there's a new standard because now there's a new you. Glory to God. So the things that used to be okay aren't okay anymore. And remember, it wasn't that far back, just a few sessions back, last series, where I was talking to you about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which Jesus said, I hate. People will tell you you can mix it all together. But no, there's a new standard. It's God's standard or the wrong standard. There's just really no in-between. It's either God's standard as revealed in the Word, His Word becoming your standard, or the wrong standard. So ask yourself, what is your standard? Because it matters. His word becomes our standard when Jesus is our Lord. Now, I read all this to get to verse 20 because I'm talking to you about something very important tonight. Look at verse 20. I'm going, you need to read that whole chapter, but for time's sake, because time is kind of the enemy on the wall. You've ever heard that before? It's another illustration. <laughs> but, but, but verse 20, let me just say this. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. I don't realize how many illustrations I use till I... You know, get chastised over one. St. Corinthians 5.20. Look at this. Now then, we are ambassadors for ourselves. See, listen to me. Your church attendance, your tithing, you, you're not doing it just for yourself. You're an ambassador for somebody. Oh, wow. 
You're an ambassador for who? Christ. Now, what does this mean? Christ is not Jesus' last name. Here's what it means. The anointed one and his anointing. So you're an ambassador for the anointing of God. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You're an ambassador for the anointing of God. As though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Woo! So catch this. I want you to catch this. Two points right here. One, we're citizens in heaven. We covered that tonight. We're citizens in heaven. I'm talking to you about making this count. So you need to know this. You're a citizen in heaven. Two, you're an ambassador for Christ. That's, who, that's really what you are. You're an ambassador for Christ. You're only here temporarily. And you're here on a stewardship called life. Yeah. This is how you make your life count. This is why I'm getting this off to you tonight. Think of this. An ambassador is a diplomat that represents a country in a foreign land. So with this in mind, you're a citizen in heaven, and you're an ambassador for Christ in a foreign land. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Because me, I already know. Natural minded people are so twisted. I'm like, what? What are you saying? I'm saying what the Bible says. Ambassadors ensure, they make for sure that the citizens of their state they represent are safe in the land that they're living in. Did you catch that? They seek to build and maintain. A strong diplomatic and economic tie with a foreign nation while taking care of all the administration needs of the embassy. Now, as I keep reading this, I keep seeing a parallel. We're ambassadors for Christ in his church. Wow. It's kind of like his embassy. This is the parallel I'm drawing. An ambassador always works for the interest of the country they represent unless they're a double agent. Let me say that again. Ambassadors always work for the interest of the country they represent, unless they're a double agent. All the while, the country they represent provides housing and payments for all that they do. They don't have to pay for anything. You see the parallel there? Jesus is our provider. God's name is Jehovah Jireh. He's more than enough. He will provide for you. I see these parallels. In the United States, an ambassador answers directly to the Secretary of State. That's their direct boss. However, further review what I found out, you can find this on a government website actually, that they work at the pleasure, quote unquote, of the president. Now you say, well, I'm, I came to hear the word. I'm giving you the word. You're an ambassador for Christ. But I'm talking to you about the parallel because this is very interesting to me. This means that you could be dismissed at any time by the president. I got to really looking at this, and I said, wow, this is cool. Did you know that an ambassador doesn't even have to pay taxes on the money because they represent the country that sent them? I was like, wow, this is a, well, what a job. And God qualified us to be ambassadors for Christ. I'm just going to be honest with you. I've never met an ambassador. Well, I met one that used to be an ambassador, a man one time, for the United States. But I've never met a sitting ambassador. But that's someone of high esteem. You don't just say, what's up, homie, to an ambassador. You follow me? I'm just saying this. God has qualified you and he's called you by his name to be an ambassador for Christ, which is at the highest level that there is. There is nothing higher than the kingdom of God. The United States is not higher, nor any other country in this entire world. Higher than the call to be an ambassador for Christ. When I think of all these parallels, and there's many others I don't want to spend time on, it fires me up that you and I are called ambassadors for Christ. <laughs> it makes me think this. What does he think, the Lord, about what we're doing with what he's given us? You see, we used to be located at 2615 Paramount in Amarillo. And I would tell the staff back then, we're going to maximize 
this building. You remember me saying that a lot. We're going to maximize this building. And so we had some rooms over there that we used for seven or eight different things. I'm not exaggerating. You talk about multi-use, we were maximizing. And the Lord said, I'll tell you what, he brought us this one. Praise God. We went from just under 12,000 square feet to just under 40,000 square feet. And now we're maximizing this building. That's the track we're on, following God. We're making it count. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because as pastor here, I think about this. What does God think about what we're doing here? What has he called us to do? Are we doing that? Well, weave back into this what we looked at Sunday, the parable of the talents. I had to go back to it, and I said, I want to leave it alone because we spend a lot of time on it Sunday, but I want you to turn to one verse tonight before we go, and I want to go back to this about the parable of the talents. We were looking at this, and these verses talk about the importance of stewardship, so it's all tied together. But look at Matthew 25 and verse 30. Say it one more time tonight. Thank God for the Word. I want you to look at this. The master in this parable that Jesus told says, Cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's pretty serious, isn't it? But as I was meditating on this, something hit me. This servant was as much a servant of his master as the other two servants until he became unprofitable. He was a servant like the other two who heard, well done, good and faithful servant, but he didn't hear well done. In fact, if you remember all those verses we looked at, he was called lazy. He was called wicked. And that got me to thinking about this. What were the characteristics of this servant? If he was a servant as much as the other two, but he got a different result than them, we looked at their results Sunday. I gave you an action step. Many of you signed that card. I think that was a wonderful thing. But let me just tell you this. Let me tell you this. I thought about this. What about the unprofitable one? We want to look at both examples so we know what to do and what not to do. As the Bible makes it clear. Do you want to look at this before we go? What are these characteristics of the servant that became unprofitable? Number one, he hid the talent the master gave him. Why does that matter? What are you doing with what God gave you? What are you doing with what God gave you? Are you using it for His glory or are you doing nothing with it? Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite (laughs) you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.